These are EK's in-house made 120mm Loop FPT fans DRGB fans. Yeah, the naming because it doesn't really make sense once you put fan behind it. But we already had a glance on those some time ago as part of EK's Nucleus AIO. And the thing is, that thing was freaking amazing. The best noise to performance ratio I have seen until that very moment. So let's take a closer look at the fans that were responsible for that performance. Because the exact same do exist as independently sold fans. But before we begin, I would like to say I do not own these fans individually. According to the manual I found online, you will get a EK loop fan as well as some screws and this extension slash adapter cable to get the PVM and 3-pin ARGB going. And just because I witnessed what EK did with the nucleus, I am pretty sure you will get one of the most gorgeous looking like fan boxes you could even dream of. But I can't show you any of that. All I have is three of these and the one extension cable, but that's enough to make it to a full review. Spinning at full throttle, we are looking at up to 2300 RPM fans with a giant, and I mean giant, central fan hub with seven relatively aggressively bent but rather short wings. Spinning at max, the Loop FPT is capable of pushing up to 77 CFM at up to 2.7 millimeters of H2O. But as the RGB is in the name, we got some fairy dust. In the center of the fan, we got a bunch of LEDs that are shining from within the center and illuminating the wings until the end. I would call the strength sufficient and the transition looks relatively smooth. So if it is your thing, great. And if not, there is also a all black and white version featuring the same black sticker with a, like a grayish EK logo in the center. The fan frame also looks hella interesting. All around the fan we got these holes, but they are not passed through. So towards the back of the fan they are closed off, so they are not spilling any air back, potentially making the performance worth. They are purely like a design aspect, weight reduction and maybe even a bit of frame strengthening as these connection points in between might add some of that. Other than that we got some relatively thick rubber around the corners on every side and some additional strengthening elements next to the mandatory EK logo that is stamped into the frame. But the most interesting thing about these fans has to be that EK connection ecosystem OmniLink. To boil it down, it is basically a miniature version of a PCIe 8-pin connector. Hidden in there, we got the 5 volt ground data needed for 3-pin RGB and the ground 12 volt Tacho and return for the PWM. And from there, we can use either the included adapter slash extension to get it back to regular PVM and 3-pin RGB or daisy chain the whole thing to another fan because attached to the very short cable we got a splitter. I already talked a fair bit about this connection in the Nucleus review and, and I freaking love it. I can grab it with my fingers, I can... It, it just stays in securely, I won't... it won't break easily because I don't need to pull on the wires. It is everything PVM and 3-pin RGB or not. I love what they did here and they are not the only ones doing it. The exact same plug was found on the Anamax area or on the fans of it. And I kind of jokingly said back then that I hope this becomes industry standard and we can finally get rid of my best friend, the plug that stays together using hopes and dreams. And in the meantime, EK tried. As I was writing the script, EK launched that OmniLink connector as a separately available power kit. We got extensions, splitters, SATA to OmniLink adapters, all kinds of stuff even Omnilink to connect this straight to the PSU. Yeah, I'm sure this will never go wrong. Now, I don't know if this will catch on to other manufacturers in the future, but sincerely, I hope so. I would love to see this become like the norm overall. Every fan having just this one Omnilink plug, and if there isn't any RGB, just leave the pins out and you are fine. You could do fans, pumps, strips, basically whatever is powered by 3-pin ARGB and PVM. Everything could be done using that one plug. Please do it. And just imagine, we could, we could have like a, a mini PCIe thing on the motherboard and then connect everything to that. How cute would that be? Anyway, this happened and I hope it continues. But for now, let's get to the benchmark. We first benchmark the EK Loop FPT120 using the case fan simulator, which measures the CPU temperature underneath a passive Nokia P1 in a wooden box where two fans are recycling the air within it. Letting the loops spin at their max 2300 RPM, they managed to keep the CPU at 42.9 degrees 
degrees C above ambient, which is a respectable result. It's in the top third of the list, outperforming other contestants like the Fantex M25, Noxia A12, so it's definitely up there. And even if it landed on the same spot as the slower spinning Scythe Kaze Flex 2, given its extremely short wingspan, it's kind of surprising it landed that high in the first place. Then we slowly lowered the fan in 10% steps and noted down the temperature and noise to create a noise to performance curve. Unlike what we usually see, the noise of the EK loop fan jumped unevenly. Going from 100 to 90, it dropped by a lot, but not so much to 80, while it's losing a lot in temperature, and then it dropped by a, a lot again. Usually the lines go down much smoother, but, but hey, if it works. On the grand scheme, it didn't perform badly. It is in front or behind the Fantex T30, depending on where you look, and then it starts dropping towards the lower end, where it struggles to, com to compete with the Fantex T25. And then it drops back to equal T30 once again, it's, it's quite the jumping thing with these. But if you compare it to things like a A12 or Thermaltake Tough Fan, it's not quite that good as a case fan. For our radiator test, we benchmarked them on top of a 10 FPI 80 mm thick radiator and measure the temperature of the water above ambient. Spinning at max speed, we got a surprisingly similar result with the EK loop landing right next to the Scythe Kaze Flex 2 at 10.8 degrees C above ambient. For the noise to performance ratio, the drops and not drops in noise have become much less severe once a radiator was behind. However, from start to finish, the EK loop was performing roughly like a Fantex M25, but with better top and minimum speed ratios. So where does this leave us? They are definitely good fans. For both radiators and case fan usage, they can do the job, but they are definitely not the best in slot. As a case fan, they are kind of jumpy, but for case fans, you should rather watch out for that 37 to 39 dB range, that area in between, I can hear them and I don't want to be in the room anymore. And there they were okay. Not the best, but compared to other high-end options, they were okay. For radiators, kind of the same thing, or to be honest, slightly disappointing. Generally, they were quite comparable to Fantax M25, sure, with a bit of like more bang at the at both ends, but I expected them to be more like Thermaltake Tough Fans 12 Pro, or at least beat the crap out of Noxia's A12, but given that the NF A12s are quiet as hell, these loop fans never quite made it there. I mean, still upper class, high-end fans, but not quite where I thought they would be. So where does this leave us? Well, on one side, I love the OmniLink connector, great thing. I hope everybody gets on that train and we can all burn our three pin ARGB splitters. But as for high-end fans, these seem to be more towards the bottom of the barrel. They are definitely still in the high-end zone, but there are quite some fans coming after them. But on the bright side, price-wise, they aren't as bad as I thought. At 21 and a half euro on EK's own shop, it's really okay. Not quite the Noxia price, which for a fan that landed that high on a max performance for radiator chart, it's not that bad at all. But okay, this should be it for EK and their Loop FPT DRGB N120. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to write a letter to whoever was in charge of forcing Tim Apple to give Europeans USB-C. If they did it there, they can force everybody to use OmniLink. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.